Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, me today. Uh, my name is Tabitha Monahan. I'm one of the transition specialists here at NESCA. And this summer, uh, we're incredibly excited to offer two different summer programs uh, focused on transition for our high school and young adults. Uh, I come from the adult service world, having worked with a variety of different state agencies, including uh, the Department of Developmental Services, DDS, Mass Rehab Commission, MRC, um, both their supported living program for people with physical disabilities and uh, having, of course, connections with their vocational program, uh, as well as the Department of Mental Health and some of the mass health funding waivers that typically don't uh, apply to a lot of our students. Uh, but if you have, if your students uh, are at the Pappas Hospital School for Children, uh, you might be familiar with those, and I've worked with those as well. I fell in love working with transition age youth uh, through MRC's Turning 22 program. I loved working with young adults and helping them continue to build the skills they needed uh, once they left public education. And I moved my way down to working specifically with transition age youth because I wanted to help focus on getting them the skills they needed to reach their optimum level of independence. Uh, and so there's less fires to <laughs> put out, so to speak, once they're in adulthood. Uh, I am, have uh, the state of Massachusetts uh, transition specialist endorsement, and I'm a nationally certified transition specialist. Uh, so uh, we at NESCA uh, understood and kind of really that there's a huge gap, especially in the summer months for um, transition services. Uh, and especially for the students who, you know, don't fit into one or two of those really easy boxes where it's built into the curriculum, getting these important transition skills um, doesn't happen during the school year and or barely happens during the school year. And it doesn't get covered uh, during extended school year programs because they're so focused on the regression and, and preventing that regression. And so uh, we at NESCA decided that you know, this is something that we could offer uh, to our to our families in Massachusetts. And so we have two different summer program that we're offering. Uh, one is for students uh, who are thinking about the college track and transitioning from school to college. And so this can be someone who's planning on going to a uh, community college or four-year uh, college right after they're done with public uh, public education. So maybe they're still doing, you know, some uh, fifth year or some transition services, but their main plan is to, to go to a two or four year college afterwards. And our second program is for those that maybe don't know if college is the right fit for them, or they're going to do a more uh, non-traditional college route. Uh, maybe they're going to do some more employment tra training or attend some day services. And, you know, as most young adults, right, our options may change frequently based on our knowledge, you know, the program. And so uh, here at NASCA, we're going to take kind of a holistic view of these areas. And kind of breaking them up in the two groups based on how we're going to explore those. Uh, so topics that will be involved for everybody include some of the most important pieces. So, you know, really defining that vision statement, uh, you know, starting with the vision statement they shared in their last IEP, uh, whether, you know, they did that through a PowerPoint presentation or um, shared it verbally during the meeting or through other means and statements, uh, goal setting, 
building that self-awareness and self-realization. And so when we're talking about all of these pieces, uh, it will be important, you know, how are we going to look at them? So to learn and practice goal setting, there's going to be a goal that they set that they're going to work on achieving during the five weeks of the program. Uh, but they're going, that goal is going to be relatable and, you know, a stepping stone to a longer term goal that they can continue working on when the program includes. And one of the big things, you know, that is a amazing focus of a lot of uh, IEPs and progress reporting and whatnot is all of the students' strengths and gains. And so now that they're reaching their teenage years and thinking about next steps, we need to translate those strengths and also those weaknesses and see how they correlate together for adult life, right? You may have a relative strength in certain categories uh, and that may mean you want to continue working and building on that. You know, let's thinking math skills, right? That's a relative strength for you. You're doing very well in your math classes, but your career goal requires more math than you can do right now. So that lets us know we still need to build on those. Uh, and what pieces are hard for us so that we can either figure out a way around it or think about how we can find a job where the parts that are hard for us uh, are less essential. And uh, doing so in a, a way that promotes self-esteem, right? And minimizes any stigma or depreciation a person feels when they're talking about their challenges because we all have them, of course. And this connects with, you know, when we're thinking about college majors and careers, but also about what kind of programming we want to do, what kind of training we want to do. Do we want to go into a trade? Uh, and what trades will best support your great skills? And we're going to delve into self-determination. And so understanding the difference between independence and interdependence. Uh, because the, the phrases get used interchangeably a lot, and they're quite different. And when we're having a hard time, what do we do with it? How do we use different strategies when we're experiencing difficulties? And how can we have a few of those together that we can practice? Because one that you can use in a classroom may not work when you're at a cash register with a long line. Um, and all of this, right, it all kind of intertwines together with building um, and understanding the IEP process. Uh, if any of you have heard um, the director of transition at NESCA, uh, Kelly Challen speak, she gives this wonderful example about a birthday party and how a student's never invited to their birthday party until they turn 14 and then they're expected to run the thing. Uh, and so that is really kind of focusing in a, a, in a small group way of what the IEP is, what the different components are, why they relate to that person, and ways they can participate in it. Uh, my goal for most, vast majority of my students is by the time they leave public education, they're running their IEP meetings. But if we want them to get to that point and be confident in that point, it is really essential that they're aware of what it is and they're feeling confident in their ability and their right to participate. Uh, and job exploration and readiness skills, using those through explicit instruction, some role play uh, and other uh, means. Uh, we will be doing some technology-based things, but we will be doing some old-fashioned way, uh, non-tech-based skill building, so we can all use uh, a multi-modality uh, approach. And so um, before I go into 
any of the more specific differences between the two tracks. Uh, if you uh, feel free to put any thoughts in the chat, answer, ask any questions. Um, I will try to answer them as we go. Uh, and then we definitely will have time at the end as well. So college transition, how, when, and what to prepare. Uh, so this is a great pr uh, program an option for our sophomores, juniors, and seniors, or our folks that are in their post, post 12th grade that are really kind of considering uh, going to uh, college at least part-time and through um, a associate's two-year program or a four-year college program. And so one of the pieces we are going to do is take those um, college majors and connect it to post-college uh, careers. What does that degree in communications get you? What can you use that for? What are the options for a math or history degree? And you know, are there fields that your degree works in that you might enjoy? And then a big one is understanding the difference between high school and college accommodations, both, um, you know, in terms of what's available, but how to access them and how to advocate for them and what is needed uh, with a tiny touch, you know, dipping the toe in a little bit on uh, the laws that cover their rights. Uh, after after high school, IDEA no longer applies, and it, it's strictly under uh, the ADA and um, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. And so, connecting, you know, what those differences are, how how that's going to impact them, what can they do uh, if there's needs they don't think are going to be covered by an accommodation. And also look at the accommodations they currently have right now. I work with a lot of young people who don't know what accommodations they receive uh, in their daily life, either um, through a public school or substantially separate programs or out of district placements. A lot of them aren't, especially when it's so well built into a curriculum, uh, they're not aware of the outside support they need uh, and they're receiving. And that can have an effect on uh, their college planning. Uh, they need to, when they're selecting uh, a list of colleges, accommodations available and the support programs and how they're set up will make a large difference for most of our, our young people. And so that's the focus uh, for our students uh, who are thinking about the college track. And for our other students, we have uh, who maybe they aren't sure yet, maybe uh, they're going to have to have the college experience a different way. Uh, we're going to explore what those options are. Uh, so Macy is the Massachusetts uh, Inclusive Concurrent Enrollment Initiative. Uh, so those are the programs you will uh, may have seen at Salem State or Bridgewater State, uh, or Mass Bay has a pretty great one that they're running on their own now. Certificate programs that might get a person to the job they really like, but doesn't require a full course load, like becoming a certified nurse's aide. Uh, what services are available through state agencies? How can uh, Mass Rehab Commission support you after high school? Uh, what programs, if, uh, if you think you're going to be uh, served through DDS, uh, or you've already been approved for DDS, uh, what, kind, what do those programs and options look like? 
Uh, and so in this track, we're also going to work through strengths and challenges uh, with more of an emphasis on those job skills and learning what's a hard skill, what's a soft skill, how are they transferable to different environments? How do independent living skills, why are they so important? And how do they interact with all these aspects of life? And then some of those concrete learning opportunities, uh, you know, resume building, uh, the different types of resume formats, why you might want to use a skill-based format versus a chronological format, especially early in your career. Um, and also how to talk through and discuss disclosure in the workplace and ways that can be supported uh, and strategies for how to do so brainstorming for when it goes super awesome, or maybe, you know, when your uh, boss or supervisor needs a little more coaching to understand their responsibilities uh, and what is reasonable uh, versus what is not, uh, you know, an example I give a lot of my students is uh, it's reasonable to ask for an office on the first floor if you have a mobility impairment. It is not reasonable to ask them to put in an elevator. And so those kind of working through those kinds of instructions. Uh, and we had a question about sharing the handouts. Absolutely, uh, they will be sent to you uh, tomorrow. Uh, and We are now, we're going to keep it nice and short today uh, because I know you all have a very busy <laughs> evenings at home uh, and we just wanted to have this opportunity to share and feel free to ask questions. You can raise your hand uh, and I can uh, turn on your mic if you would prefer to type it in the chat. Please uh, feel free to do that as well. Uh, this uh, will be uh, done in person. Uh, we have we are setting up uh, a space so people can um, safely distance. Uh, NESCA is still considered uh, NESCA is considered a medical practice, so we will be going by uh, medical practice guidelines. And I apologize, my screen uh, decided to freeze for a moment. So I can't, uh, I saw another chat question. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, yes, uh, so, um, for the uh, first question in the chat, uh, yes, uh, one of uh, once you're accepted into the program, and that's just a short intake form to make sure uh, the student needs align with what we're able to offer. Uh, instruction will be um, based on the student's uh, ability. For example, uh, for a per, uh, students in the post secondary options. Uh, there'll be a variety of career exploration activities that we will do, uh, and some will not require reading at all. Um, and so, um, while this program uh, is primarily geared towards people who are on an IEP, uh, if you have a student with a learning difference that's on a 504 plan or has even made it uh, and is succeeding without um, a 504 plan, uh, we can definitely look into it and talk about it. 
um, to ensure uh, the program will fit your child and their needs. Um, I, uh, there's no uh, <laughs> requirement for an IEP. So if they're in a private school, uh, uh, if you've had a um, recent, one of the questions was if you had a recent TPA through our agency done by another one of the transition specialists, uh, definitely give them an email if they think it would be appropriate uh, and they can connect with me uh, and send, uh, send out the info. Um, absolutely. So um, the applicant, I actually didn't cover the application process. So thank you, Marissa, uh, for that great idea. So basically it's a short intake form. Um, base, you know, what your um, students needs are, what their disabilities are, if they're on any medication, seizure disorders, things like that. Some information about their uh, technology use, uh, just to, again, just to get a glimpse and make sure there aren't any other questions uh, that uh, I would like to cover with you before accepting your student into the program. Uh, once your student's accepted into the program, I am going to ask for a decent amount of information uh, so I can get to know your student uh, better and make sure that I'm planning those uh, appropriate activities uh, and making sure I'm differentiating it for your students uh, abilities. Um, so, you know, things like the most recent IEP and progress notes, um, if the, the recent uh, reevaluation forms from the school, if you've had a TPA, a transition planning assessment done, definitely would love to see that. Uh, I'm a big fan, especially if it's recently, I don't want to make <laughs> your students do similar uh, measures uh, that they've already done. Uh, but that's still a great way for them to then pull that information from the transition planning form, them, uh, transition planning assessment themselves to use in the activities. Uh, for students who are thinking college, uh, SAT scores, transcripts, things like that, there is a list um, that will be available in the welcome packet. Um, so, um, there was a question about um, the con conflict uh, with some of the town's ESY times. During the summer, unfortunately, we are not able to uh, offer uh, a later or different uh, time. However, uh, if there is enough interest uh, and we are open to doing similar type programs in the fall that may be able to be done in the evening. Um, uh, I don't know if it will be offered every summer, uh, but um, this is our first summer offering it. So I would hate to um, say, yes, it will be if for whatever reason it won't. Uh, we do offer, um, this is, basically a group version of the private uh, transition coaching and services we provide, which we do on both a short-term and long-term base. Uh, so if the summer program uh, is not working with your schedules or your vacations or uh, other school commitments, uh, it may be worth still reaching out to me to see what uh, maybe one-on-one -on -one options uh, may be more appropriate for your student. Um, so transition planning assessments, um, that is a, it's both a long and a short answer. Uh, the uh, short answer is yes, <laughs> NESCA does transition planning assessments. That is, um, uh, we have, three full-time transition specialists and several part-time transition specialists whose focus are providing those in-depth transition assessments that cover all of the 
uh, transition framework. So your education and your training, your employment and vocational needs, your independent living skills, uh, and your leisure and community engagement. Um, schools uh, do do transition assessments as well. Uh, and that's often part of a three-year reeval. A lot of activities that schools do um, may be considered a transition assessment if it can get piled away as such. Uh, there is a lot of different talks out there, uh, Nesca and um, myself included having done them. Uh, if you aren't sure um, about uh, getting that um, age appropriate transition assessment and if your school's done that, it may be worth checking that out on uh, Nesca's, uh, I know I did a basic transition um, webinar in the fall that should be on Nesca's Facebook page. Uh, and I can try to get that link um, to go out with the handouts. Um, uh, because that does give a lot of those transition basics that can be helpful for parents to know. Uh, if you call our main number, uh, uh, which is 617-658-9800, um, they can help connect you for a transition planning setup. I'm also going to put the link for our uh, intake form in the chat. And I'm going to do it with a typo apparently. Uh, this is the general intake form uh, that's used for all of our services. Uh, so it is a separate intake form than the one for the summer program. But if you select the summer program, uh, someone will get back to you with that, um, about that as well. Um, so yes, every school absolutely should be doing transition planning. Uh, and um, I, the transition planning form is my best friend. Um, <laughs> and I can talk, uh, I could probably do a whole uh, webinar about that. Um, so, but yes, yeah, so transition planning looks different in every school district frankly, in every classroom kind of set up. Uh, so the, the big focus that we want to make sure transition planning is uh, when we're thinking assessment pur uh, purposes is to verify that it's covering all of the, your child's areas of need uh, and all of your areas of concern uh, and is related to their post-secondary vision. Uh, so this program this summer isn't transition planning assessment, it is transition skill building. Uh, so taking those common factors that every student needs uh, as they prepare for post-secondary life once they exit public education and helping them uh, with those uh with those different pieces. Uh, and every student uh, in this program is going home with almost everything, if not everything they've worked on with me. So it can be a document that can be brought to their school program uh, or can be used with other providers in the fall. Uh, and, and so that, and it can be used for their reference while they're going through their college search process or thinking about their different options or, you know, when they get asked by their teacher in preparation of the IEP meeting, what their greatest strengths are and what their vision for the future is, they, you know, and they freeze with that big open-ended question, they'll have that binder that they can refer back to. Um, and so, uh, Probably tomorrow, you will get a link with the PDF version of our handouts. Um, and um, 
as well as the intake form. If you feel this program may be a good fit for your child, we deal who still have uh, some openings in, in both the college transition and post-secondary option classes. Uh, college transition is happening Monday and Wednesday uh, with post-secondary options happening Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, I'll leave this for a few more moments just in case there are any other uh, final questions or thoughts. Uh, and if you think of something later, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I can be reached at our main number, 617-658-9800 or uh, tmonahan at nescanewton.com. Um, I would love uh, if we could get uh, applications in this week, early next week at the latest. Um, the, uh, we are breaking up payments for um, into two different um, payment options uh, with half due uh, when you secure your spot for your child and the other half due uh, two weeks before. Uh, so uh, the final payment would be required June 27th. Um, and ideally I would like all of the records um, by uh, Monday the 13th so I can make sure uh, that I have the appropriate uh, lessons uh, for your child and their individual uh, learning needs. Uh, so that was the long version. Short version is as soon as possible um, with a deadline to get me documents um, and you know the, the IEPs and stuff by uh, June 13th. Uh, the final payment would be due June 27th if you're breaking up the payments uh, into two sections. And um, if you have any other questions, definitely email me. Uh, or reach out to Crystal Jean uh, is the intake coordinator who's helping me with the summer program. Um, and we'll ha we're happy to you know, help guide you in, uh, through this process and confirm that it is a great fit uh, for your child. And leave one more moment just in case there's any other questions and then uh, we will stop for uh, the evening. Thank you all so much for joining me. I know this time of year is hectic for everyone uh, as we are finally seeing the end of this school year and starting to look for that forward to the fabulous, wonderful summer weather. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful night.